Well, let's pray. Father God, thank you once again for the privilege of studying your word. Lord, we, we thank you for the privilege of the Gospels to be able to look to you, to observe, to watch, to hear, to listen, to learn. We ask and pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, will do a miraculous work within our hearts, within our lives. We desire that our prayer life be forevermore changed through this study. So we surrender ourselves to you and with expectant hearts we believe your blessing on this study and on our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 23. We began this study with Jesus' earthly ministry beginning at his baptism. And we've been studying throughout Luke's gospel at Jesus' prayer life. And we, we started as he came up out of the water. And, and from there he began to teach and to preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand he began to heal. He opened blinded eyes, blind Bartimaeus. He healed the lame. He cast out devils. Mary Magdalene, Legion. He healed lepers. He reached out and he touched those who were untouchable. He did many, many miracles. The scripture says that he healed every disease. He opened deaf ears. He loosened tongues that were, were mute. He changed lives, multitudes upon multitudes of lives. He fed the 5,000. Then he fed the 4,000. We watched him as he was transfigured with Peter, James, and John. We looked at him when he was choosing the disciples after praying all night long. We saw him in the upper room where he encouraged Peter. And said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have, I've prayed for you. We then watched him at the Garden of Gethsemane as he prayed before the disciples and surrendered to the will of the Father. And from there, he was arrested, falsely accused and tried, sentenced to be crucified. And he carried the cross from Jerusalem outside of the city up to Calvary. And at some point on Calvary's hill, he took his very last step. And he was crucified. He was hung on a tree. And that's where we see our Lord in Luke chapter 23 hanging on the cross. And so, Jesus has come to the end of His earthly ministry. He's taken His final step. He's touched the last person that He's going to touch. And now He can really do nothing but hang there on the cross as He awaits death. And it's interesting what we see here in verse 34 of Luke 23. It says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast 
and they parted his raiment and cast lots. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This brings us to number 11 in our study. When we can do nothing else, we can pray. When we can do nothing else, we can pray. Jesus is not going to touch anyone else until after his death. He's, he's taken his final step until after his resurrection. He's come to the end of the line. And in reality, from a physical standpoint, although he is saving the world at the moment on the cross, he can physically do nothing else. But when you can do nothing else, you can pray. I want to read a, a quote from Abraham Lincoln. It says this, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had absolutely no other place to go. Jesus has went as far as he can go there on Calvary, crucified. And he is praying for those who have placed him there. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He can't touch any of them, but he can pray for every one of them. Because when we can do nothing else, we can pray. Have you ever felt like you were at the end of your road? I'm sure you have. Jesus in our study is literally at the end of the road. He's carried the cross as far as he could and then they had another carry the cross the rest of the way and now they've nailed him to the tree and they've, they've hung him on the cross. He can take no more steps. It's the end of the road. It's why he came. So when you and I find ourselves at the end of our road, we need to remember that when you can do nothing else, you can pray. We need to remember what Jesus did. At the end of the road, you can pray. Have you ever felt like your hands were tied? You wanted to do something, you wanted to reach out, you, you wanted to touch, but you were in a situation under circumstances where you couldn't. Your hands were tied. Jesus' hands literally tied more so nailed to the cross. He can't move them. He's hanging there. And when our hands are tied, when we can't do anything else, we need to remember what Jesus does here. With His hands nailed to the cross, He can't reach out. He can't touch. But prayer has no limit in the physical. It goes beyond the physical into the spiritual realm. And when we can do nothing else, we can pray. When we're at the end of our road, we can pray. And when our hands are tied, we can pray. You may feel like your hands are tied with a loved one, with a friend, with a, uh, a situation, a relationship, and you feel like you've done all you can do and there's really nothing else you can do. But there is something you can do. You can pray. Have you ever felt like your back was against the wall? Well, we look here in our study, Jesus' back is against the cross. As he hangs suspended between heaven and earth. And we need to do what he does. When our backs are against the wall, we can pray. And we should pray. We need to pray. You ever felt like you were between a rock and a hard place? Jesus has made his way to the top of a rock. As a matter of fact, it's called Golgotha because it was like a skull. And there he is, crucified on that rock. But he's praying. He's praying for those who have placed him there. He's crying out to the Father. When you and I have come to the end of our road, when we've when, we, when our hands are tied, when, when our back's against the wall, when we're between a rock and a hard place, when we can do nothing else, we can pray. 
Prayer can be done anywhere. Prayer can be done at any time. It can be done under any circumstances. What a precious gift. What an opportunity. What a valuable lesson that we learn as we look to our Lord here. He's praying. And so, here He is on the cross and He can do nothing else. And He cries out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We tend to think when... We're at our worst when there's nothing else we can do but pray. But it's really a blessing at that point. When we're at the end of our limits, nothing is impossible with God. And so when we can do nothing else, we need to pray. What an amazing truth. What an amazing lesson. It's my desire that we will cling to this truth and We'll live it out for the rest of our days. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that as our example hanging on the cross, you're praying. And so we ask, we pray that you would remind us by your spirit, that you would help us by your grace, that you would strengthen us. That when we can do nothing else, we can pray. And so, Lord, at this very moment, I pray that you would remind us as we close in prayer of circumstances, situations that, that we've gone as far as we can, that our hands are tied, our backs against the wall, we're between a, between a rock and a hard place, and maybe we've become discouraged and we've given up. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be renewed in our determination that when we can do nothing else, we can pray, because even at our limits, you are unlimited. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.